Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a little update video. So I have a bunch of products here that I have been using in my videos over the last couple of months, but you may have only seen me use them once or twice. So today I wanted to give you a full rundown of all these products and update you on if I'm still enjoying them or whatever my thoughts may be. I have done one video like this before, so I will link it down below if you want to go watch it. If you do enjoy watching, please give it a thumbs up. I really like giving you these updates because I feel like there's so much pressure to buy new, 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 and we can't all be doing that. So I like letting you know how the new products that I have tried are working and if it's something that I definitely think is worth having in your makeup collection. I hope that makes sense because I feel like I was just rambling a bit. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. You can also come follow me over on Instagram if you aren't already. I will have my name on the screen right now for you. Otherwise, let's just get straight into the video. First product I want to talk about. Oh, I have so many. Let's go in with some designer brands. So a few of these products I used quite a while ago, but I felt like I've been receiving a lot of questions on them. So first we have the On The Go Face Palette. So this palette contains four eyeshadows, a blush, a highlighter, and a bronzer. Now, I do have mixed feelings on this one. Now the bronzer and the blush are very, very shimmery formulas. And although I do like those products, to give me a bit of a sheen and a glow in a palette that is intended to be on the go, I would prefer a matte formula. The bronzer does look nice, even with the amount of shimmer it has in it, but with the blush, I do find that I have to go in with quite a light hand because it can be easily overdone. As for the actual shades of the blush, bronzer, and highlighter, they are quite good neutral shades and they are going to work for a variety of skin tones. They work on my very fair skin to maybe a light medium. And then the eyeshadows. As you can see, you've got your matte cream, a matte brown, a shimmery brown, and a matte kind of burgundy, burg excuse me, a matte burgundy shade. I find these four colors are very easy to do many different eye looks with, and they're actually quite cool toned. So again, they are going to work for a variety of skin tones. Next by designer brands, I have the Gold Elixir Priming Potion. Now this is infused with gold flakes, aloe vera, vitamin C, and hyaluronic acid. It's meant to be super hydrating and give the skin luminosity. Now I just wasn't that impressed with this primer in the end. First of all, it has a really strong smell and I'm not that sensitive to scents, but I do find it a little bit off-putting. It has a gel consistency, which does feel really nice on the skin. It blends in and absorbs easily and it does feel hydrating. I find my skin looks a little luminous, but it doesn't last very long. If I put foundation over the top, I feel like I'm not seeing that luminosity come through as I do with some other glowy primers I have. Even the designer brand's Luminous Hydrating Primer, I think it's called, is so much better if you're after that really glowy skin look. So although I did enjoy this primer at first, after dipping into it a few more times, I just found I wasn't getting out of it what I expected. So therefore this isn't something that I would reach for again. And then lastly by designer brands, I have the Make em Blush Pressed Mineral Blushes. Now I love the packaging of these blushes and the shades are really beautiful but I just found I'm not reaching for them as often as I thought I would. As I said, I do love a good glowy blush that is going to give me a nice sheen, but this is just a little bit too much. My absolute favorite blush is the Maybelline Fit Me, and I find this gives that perfect amount of color, that perfect amount of sheen, so any other glowy blush that I try, I do always compare it to this. I do love the sheen it gives, and it has a good color payoff, but I found if you apply too much is when the sheen becomes too much and you can start to see a lot of texture in your skin and I'm not here for that. I am going to keep these blushes in my collection. I'm just going to use them a little bit differently. So more as a blush topper. So just a nice light layer over the top of other blushes I use to get that beautiful sheen and that glow to my skin. All right, let's mix it up a bit and talk about some brushes. Now, I don't think I even mentioned these, but Sigma released 
a few new brushes and they are like mini versions of brushes they already have. Now over time I've learnt that smaller brushes are the way to go when doing your eyeshadow. Well for me and my eye shape anyway. So first up I have the E27 Detail Blending Brush. And so this is a mini version of the E25 Blending Brush. So as you can see they're quite pinched at the base and then come up to a more fluffy head. Now I love the E25 but having the E27 and just having it so much smaller you can really get into your crease here you can even use this under the lower lash line for blending it's just oh, I just have no words to describe these mini brushes I freaking love them next I have the E33 detail diffused crease brush and this one has quite long bristles and it's a very very fluffy brush so this is going to be perfect for blending out your shadows and really diffusing them above the crease. Now I can't remember what this is a mini version of, but if you have smaller eyes and you find the bigger fluffy blending brushes like this one for instance are way too big for your eyes, get onto this. It just fits so perfectly in the eyes. I actually used it today and it picks up the perfect amount of color and just blends it out. Oh my God. Oh. And then lastly, I have the E42 Precision Firm Blender. And this one is also a blending brush. It has quite a fluffy top, but it's not as flexible as the previous one. So if I just show you the difference there, you can see it's a little bit shorter and the top of the brush is more domed, whereas the black bristle there is a bit more fluffy. So this one you can be a bit more precise with. So for me, I like to pack the shadow onto the outer corner here and then blend it through the crease and it's going to stay in that crease. It's not going to be diffused up higher. I also love this one for under the lower lash line. It's the perfect size for blending out colors under there. I personally like a really smoky lower lash line and this just does the job perfectly. Sigma brushes are fantastic quality and I highly recommend these three mini brushes. I hope they bring out more because I freaking love them. I don't talk about this much, but I am a Sigma affiliate. So if you were interested in buying some Sigma brushes, I will put my code on the screen for you. And there's also a link down in the description box. And then some more brushes I want to talk about are the Kmart brushes that I tried in a video. So first up I have the 005 Buffing Brush and this is a foundation brush. Now it's not as dense as your regular Kabuki style brush but I have really been enjoying it. It is super soft and it's really easy to wash as well. When I use foundation brushes I like to stipple the foundation, not really buff it into the skin and this does a great job at that. It gives full coverage and it blends the foundation out really well. You could also use this brush for cream products. So like a cream bronzer, it would be good for blending that out or a cream blush. These were all around $10 or less, so pretty good deal. And then I have the 006 powder brush. As you can see, this is a nice, big, fluffy, angled brush, perfect for applying blush, as you can see I have been doing. This one also is really soft and easy to wash. It picks up a great amount of product, probably not as much as some of my more expensive brushes, but it still does a really good job if you're looking for something on the affordable side. Next, I wanna quickly mention the Astralis Fresh and Flawless Foundation and Concealer. The foundation I have absolutely been loving. I reach for it all the time. It has amazing full coverage. The color is a little bit off. I do find the shade I have called Ferris to be a bit more on the warm side. So if you are interested in this foundation, I do suggest going into store and actually swatching them. But the longevity of this foundation is absolutely amazing and it lasts well in the heat too. As for the concealer, I haven't reached for that one again. So I guess that speaks for itself. It was all right, but I wasn't very impressed. Not as impressed as the foundation anyway. A concealer that I have been enjoying is the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Concealer, and this is in the shade Ivory 05. Now this concealer was quite different to what I expected. So the Superstay foundation is really full coverage and 
has a beautiful finish to the skin and the concealer, it does leave a beautiful finish, but it wasn't as full coverage as I was expecting. Now, something like the L'Oreal Infallible, which I've really been loving, that has full coverage. Whereas this, I would say, has high coverage. A slight difference, but it's there. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful concealer and it's enough coverage and it does build up well if you're after that little bit more. And the consistency of it is really nice as well. It's not super thick and dry, but it's giving you more coverage than the Fit Me Concealer by Maybelline. The shade of this is really great for my fair skin tone as well. It has more of a neutral undertone. A little bit of this goes a long way as well. So this is definitely a concealer that I would repurchase. Onto a product that after trying a few more times, I realized it wasn't as good as I originally thought. And that is the Inoxa Color Correcting Concealer. So this is a green color correcting concealer that is going to help neutralize redness. Now, I did enjoy that it was a very pale pastel green, but after using it a few times, I realized that it doesn't have a lot of coverage. So whenever I have blemishes and redness, it's red, so I do want my green concealer to cover that up a bit. But this I found was a really sheer formula and after blending it in, I could still see a lot of the redness coming through. I have a lot of other drugstore options that I prefer a lot more than this. So unfortunately, this was a bit of a dud for me in the end. Next is the e.l.f. Jelly Highlighter, and I have the shade Bubbly. Now this highlighter was really cool to use. The consistency, let me see if I can show you. There's literally like wobbly putty. It is so weird. It's a really beautiful shade for my skin tone, but it is like, it's there, okay? This is a glam highlighter. So I haven't really reached for it again because it is so in your face. But if I am going to be doing a glamorous look, this is something I would definitely reach for. It applies really well if you put a little bit on the back of your hand and dip your beauty blender into it and then apply it to the face rather than going straight in with your finger, then it's going to be too much. And lastly, I have a brow product by Maybelline. This is the Ultra Slim Brow Pencil. And I originally tried the shade Soft Brown, which was dark, but I kind of made it work. Not in the original video, like I went way too heavy handed. But after trying it a few more times, the darker shade I could get to work for my skin. But I still went out and brought a lighter shade anyway. This is the shade Blonde. And this shade is something that I use more on a daily basis. The tip of this pencil is so thin. It is really good for being super precise with your brow. And then on the other end, it has a spoolie. So this kind of brow pencil is something I've always loved from the Anastasia Brow Is to the NYX one, I can't remember the name of it, but these are a staple brow pencil and the formula of this, it's that perfect in between of not too creamy and not too dry, and it stays on the skin for really long periods of time. All right, well, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you've tried out any of these products, leave me your thoughts below down in the comments. As I said, if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Gold Elixir Priming Pro... Sh but anyway, this... Bl and this is... A as I said, if you are new to my... Get out of my face.